Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all well this morning. Um, having a look at Bitcoin on the hourly chart, a very interesting chart that developed yesterday morning. Um, we had highs yesterday up to 19,918 here on Bitstamp. I don't know if so much changes. It went higher than that. Um, we've had two clear breakdown and we've clearly hit the 100 hour moving average twice. So at one o'clock yesterday, we came back down and we bounced strongly off of the 100 hour moving average. We came back up and we, we touched on the 20, which is always a barometer of where we're at. And we were resisted there was resistance strong resistance at the 20 a couple of occasions as you can see here there were these two you'd count them as occasions where it's attempted the 20 and not managed to overcome that 20 hour moving average and as you can see we came back down again <laughs> we came back down again i have a button issue uh, well i um as you can see, this is like an ad libbed video where <laughs> I am just going into it ad hoc. And that's how I like to do things. Just have a look at it naturally, how I think about the charts, how I see things. I think I've got this on back to front, but we won't worry about that for now. So again, this morning, 4 a.m., back down to that 100 hour moving average, which at that time was around 18,412. We've bounced strongly off of that and then straight through the 20 and the 50. So that's a bullish development again. Now, what can we do this time? Can we go and scale this um, this high here? I think this black line is the all-time high at Bitstamp. That's the all-time high from December 2017 at Bitstamp. And as you can see, we keep breaching it. We keep hitting it. We keep hitting that all-time high and not confirming strongly closing a candle above it. So in the, in the long term picture, that's huge because that black line there, let me show you that, is this line here is the all time high at Bitstamp prices. So look, we've we've tested it and again and again, but not closed an hourly candle above it. Now, what will this little run up now that we're experiencing now? Now, what is that going to do? Are we going to blast through it today and close an hourly candle above? That's the big question. Or is it going to go up here again, touch it and come back down? Or it might not even get there. It might go stop where it is now and go sideways. The likelihood is this little upward trajectory that we're on at the moment since 4 a.m. when it bounced strongly off the 100-hour moving average, which is a key moving average, the 100-hour, on an hourly chart. It's bounced strongly above that. You'll have people out there moaning now, oh, he's on an hourly chart, he's a short-term day trader. Well, no, let's have a look at a longer-term chart then. Let's move up to the daily first. I like the four-hour, the eight-hour, but let's have a look at the daily chart where all the averages are the most, the most looked-at chart is the daily chart. And as you can see, look, we've been on a phenomenal run. We had a healthy pullback for Thanksgiving. But the likelihood here is with the averages moved like that, look at the moving averages, perfectly lined up, all in the right order. It's a very bullish picture. The monthly close, we'll have a look at in a minute. This is very bullish because the path of least resistance is up. All the resistance is down. You're going to hit resistance there, there, and at the fib here. So the path of least resistance is to the upside. There's nothing stopping Bitcoin. Once Bitcoin gets above 20, there's nothing stopping it. There's no resistance there. There's a sell wall, a sell liquidation. There's nothing else there. Very bullish picture in this moving average. And even this looking at this, look at the pullback in August and September, sorry. Look, it came down, it hovered. Now, some people don't use the 100 hour moving average. Well, if you look at Bitcoin's history, it's got a clear relationship with the 100 moving average. Clear as day. Look, here, there's nothing else really other than the 100 moving average affecting it. There's no Fibonacci levels at that point from the long-term chart. Let's have a look to see then if there is a Fibonacci level at this level here. Because if it's not, 
That is clear 100-hour moving average support. Up there and then back down 100-hour moving support. Zoom in on it a little bit so you can see what I'm saying more clearly. This orange line here, this orange line. Oh, oh sorry, folks. This orange line is the hun <laughs> is the hundred hour moving average. Hundred hour simple moving average. Now look at how many times Bitcoin. Look, it's hugging it there for two weeks. It hugged it there from September the second to the thirteenth. Almost two weeks. Went up, came back down, hugged it again for five days in the middle of September. Went up, come back down, hugged it again for eight days before bouncing up now the question is let's see if there's a fib that it could have been relating to at that level but look it looks like it's a moving out because the fib will be a, a straight line this hundred hour moving average that's clearly clearly intervening with that price from the third of september second of september to the 8th of october the hundred hour moving average is the only thing that Bitcoin is affected by. So those that don't use the 100 hour moving average, I think you're bonkers. Sniper does is incredible, right? The market sniper is a fantastic trader, analyst of incredible levels, the market sniper. But he doesn't ever talk about moving averages. And I don't think you can just completely delete moving averages from the equation. Sorry, Snow, I don't mean to criticize, but I'm just saying, I don't think you can delete something out of the equation. So when you're talking about a fib from the March lows, let's get rid of this big one because it's complicated with that in there. So this is from the March lows, the big COVID crash. Um, the fib 236 was at 10.439. So it's clearly, that's clearly around that level it came to below it below that so it shot through a little bit overperformed how about if we do body to body because that that candle there is a ridiculous candle wick on that All right let's go body to body because sometimes that's completely different body to body ideally on a three-day chart now because we're, we're getting a little bit too magnified a three-day chart will be better to look at that but of course, we lose that 100 hour moving average. Unless we put in a 33, a 33 candle. Right, so we're body. Let's go body to body. Oh, I'm not sure actually. Body. Right, body to body on a three hour chart. Yeah, the 236 was the clear support there from about the 10 2 range. It's. You know, to where to draw the fibs is always an interesting one. Let's see if we do what most people would do, and that would be wick to wick. Wick to wick. Yeah, the 236 at 10,409 was the interesting level. But it was on a sloping upwards, a little wedge it created. And that wedge, have another look, perfectly skirted that 100-hour moving average for over a month look it's gone along that 100 hour moving average for a month and that's interesting for those that don't use the 100 hour or the 100 day sorry use the 100 candle it works it clearly works um right now let's have a look at a bigger picture bitcoin scenario because this one's the interesting one for bullishness we are unbelievable position at the moment in bitcoin Look at that candle that's just closed there. Look at that. Right, this is going back to December. These are the old highs in December 2017. Look, this green candle. Look at look at how it looks. It's closed up there. Look, this one closed down at 13. This is completely new territory. This this high here, this was all speculation and hype. This is proper trading. This is where we're at, folks. We're at here. We've gone right up now in 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 all, um, you know, this is now the beginning of something special. We're at the beginning of something 
we've got above that old level. And look, how many calendar years? It nearly turned out to be from 17. It nearly turned out to be four. It nearly was 21. We're nearly in the year 21. So we took a while. It, again, the last time in 20, in 20, um, this high here in November 2013, it took until 17. So that is four calendar years because it's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So yeah, look, 13 to 17 to get back to that high. So that period there is a very similar bear market period. So we've had that bear market period and now we're in new territory now. We're in new bullish momentum territory. And there's going to be sell-offs. There's going to be some market makers like yesterday, there was a candle there. We were looking at the hourly chart yesterday where it dipped right down to that 100 hour moving average. There's going to be um, some volatility. This is Bitcoin we're talking about. There's going to be, um, but the strength of it now, it's very strong at the moment because the pullback, let's have a look on our four hour chart. That's the perfect chart to monitor that sort of thing on. Perfect. We've had, so we have that pullback when we got to the high here. Um, what about last week's high? So the 30th, yeah, we had that, we kept going, didn't we? No, this high, so on a four hour chart, it, it's different charts, a different look. So we had that pullback, didn't we? Hang about, that's yesterday. I'm on about this. We had that sort of high period where we got up to what? 19 and a half. This is bits that I had it on another chart the other day and it was looked quite a bit different. So we've had this healthy Thanksgiving pullback here. The Thanksgiving pullback. So Thanksgiving was nearly a week ago, wasn't it? Thanksgiving was this day here where we had this Thanksgiving pullback and we look, this is volatility here. Candles like that, where there's a huge wick at the bottom where it's testing buying support. And that looks strong to me. That looks very strong support there, that huge wick. And, and then a bounce off of this candle here just recently, which is the, the 50 candle on the four out. On the four hour chart, the 50. Um, so that's the 200 hour moving average. It's bounced off of that strong. Or is it the 100? Because I thought we were on the 100 on the hourly chart. Look, it's had a bounce off of there. It bounced off it again there. It looks very strong. There looks to be, look, there's a big wick there. Um, this morning at 4 a.m. that that pullback, big bounce up, and then a huge marab a huge strong green candle to go into European trading. I think Bitcoin looks strong. Let's have a look at another chart. We've done Bitcoin now. I want to look at gold because gold bounced. Gold has bounced strongly. Gold, okay, the other day was closing below the 200 day, and it's bounced a lot in the last couple of days. A huge bullish scandal yesterday in gold where it it opened at 1776 and closed at 1815 now in gold that's huge and um look it's pushing on now gold um let's have a look on a one hour chart now i'm i prefer silver but obviously people look at gold a lot so gold is beginning to get above the key moving averages now Let's get rid of the 21 for the moment and just focus on the usual ones. So there's the 20 and it's above that. That's strongly bullish. And it's gone above this, which is the 200, which when there's been a, a long pull, when there's been a long downtrend, it takes a little while to get back above that. But this is bullish in gold now. Anti-fiat currency. Um, the Dixie is important now. What is the dollar doing? The US dollar will be interesting to see how that's performing because anti-fiats are clearly doing well at the moment. Um, a quick look at silver. Um, I looked at the silver gold ratio on a chart yesterday. First of all, I look at silver on its own. 
So let's look at silver on its own. And oh yeah, because I'm in silver and that's bullish in silver. <laughs> that is bullish. I have to be happy with that because it's it's come above this 20 hour and it's it's really gone. It's gone through all the other hour movement averages and then come back down, tested the 20. That's a very bullish sign for silver at the moment. Look at that. Look how it's gone through that 20, gone through the others like they're not there, come back down, tested the 20, and then bounced off off the 20. The 20-hour 20 moving average, that's bullish, very bullish silver. Chart, looks like it's bottomed and it's on its way back. I haven't got reams of silver, but it's one of the things that I've got at other than crypto. And for it to start performing... Because I think it's going to go to three digits, silver. I'll look. I'll show you. Look, it can, oh, that's perfect. Look, it came down. It tested the six one eight, the golden ratio, at twenty one point nine twice. Oh, silver has double bottomed. This is the first time I'm looking at this, folks, and this is massive to me. Silver has double bottomed. It bottomed on the twenty fourth of September, and it's bottomed on the thirtieth of November. And that's a double bottom. That is a great bottom pattern as well. That is what you want to see for a fat bottom pattern. Where, although, look, it had been on a bull run. So it's not down low in terms of low, low. That's a bottom pattern. That's like what you want to see in a correction. If you have a correction, when the correction ends, that's the sort of pattern that you want to see. A one test up again, and then two tests, and up again. And it usually will come out of that on the other side and go on. So I'm targeting silver now, 24.95. Beyond that, 26.84. I don't think that it's going to come down to this level again because that's a perfect bottoming pattern. Test, test, double bottom, on we go. That looks very bullish, silver chart. Um, not obviously very, okay, not very bullish. It looks, it looks promising. It looks like this rally here is about to continue. This looks like a correction done. So one, A, B, C, and now D. I don't know how far the D is going to go up. What if it was a one, two, three, oh, Elliott wave? Um, not there. I don't think that's one, two, three, four, five. No, I think it's one, two, three, four. I think we're going to go up in a long wave three now. Um, one, two. Right, that's very interesting, Silver, at the moment. My, my wave analysis is I need to have a proper look at this because I haven't looked at this chart. And it's the first time I looked at it. Look, it came down there perfectly. Touched the 618 and also the 100-hour moving average at the same point. So the 100-hour, again, on silver is very important. Right. Um, so, yeah, a quick look at the Dixie now because we've looked at the anti-fiats. We've not looked at other cryptos, which I think will be very interesting. How about Stellar Bitcoin? What's that doing at the moment? Because it had a massive run. It still on a bit of a correction, Stellar Bitcoin. Um Zcash, I've just bought quite a bit of Zcash actually because it had that halving. So how's that getting along? It's in a channel. That's a three-day chart. That's no good. Hourly chart. Zcash Bitcoin. Let's have a look. Oh, God. Get rid of that silly thing that I managed to touch and I've got all the screen that I didn't need to touch. Right. Zcash Bitcoin. It's had a halving. Um, overall... I think, well, it hasn't, there's no clear bottom pattern there. We will see. We will see, ZK. It's a longer term sort of thing because of it's halving. Well, I want to look at the Dixie because that's the anti fiat. Oh, I've got 30 seconds to look at the Dixie because the video will run out. Oh, oh that's an hourly chart. So it, it's hit a low, low, low there. Um, on a daily chart, this would be bearish. I mean, oh, it's just bounced today. Um, but yeah, that's a low for a long period on the Dixie going back years. So that's why we're looking bullish anti-fiat because the Dixie's very weak at the moment, 
very weak. 